Hey there, I've just updated Retooled to version 2.2 and I'm here to walk you through some of the changes. So the first thing you'll notice when you update Retooled is that there's a new theme with a light gray background. Previously, I had used Reaper's default theme, which has a dark gray background, but some people like a lighter GUI, so I've made a new theme which I'm calling Retooled Light. And this has colors that are roughly inspired by Pro Tools classic theme. So if you're coming to Reaper from Pro Tools, hopefully this should look relatively familiar. The next big change is to the toolbar up here, which I've totally overhauled. In earlier versions of Retooled, I had multiple toolbars, one docked above the track manager, another one docked above the project bay. And the problem with that was if you tried to shrink the window size in Reaper, sometimes the buttons would collapse and scale in kind of strange ways. So what I've done is consolidated all these toolbars into a single toolbar, which I've docked below the transport and above the navigator. And now, when you try to shrink the window size, the buttons scale down and collapse in a more pleasant way. So even if you're using a smaller screen, you should be able to see all the buttons. The other big change to the toolbar is that I've added more buttons and that these buttons more closely mirror Pro Tools toolbar buttons. So I have dedicated buttons for slip, ripple, and ripple all modes. And this gives us all the same information as this button here in Reaper's main toolbar, the ripple button, which cycles between the three modes. But here, it's nice to be able to pick each mode directly. And also, if you're in ripple or ripple all mode, the buttons will flash red. Whereas if you're in slip mode, it'll just be a solid green. Next to that is the snap button, which is the same thing as this little magnet button in Reaper's main toolbar. And this is kind of similar to the, the grid button on Pro Tools Transport. The difference is in Pro Tools, you're snapping to a grid. Whereas in Reaper, you're only snapping to a grid if the grid is enabled. But if you turn off a grid, then items can snap to each other or they can snap to markers. And it's kind of a convenient feature. So I recommend just having snap on all the time unless you find it annoying. Next to that, we have zoom controls, which is similar to how things are laid out in Pro Tools. So we have buttons to zoom in and out and buttons to zoom in on the waveform or peaks as we call it in Reaper. And also if you wanna reset the peaks zoom, you can use the same key command as in Pro Tools, which is command, option, control, and open bracket. And that'll reset the waveform to its default size. Next to that, we have zoom to selection. So if you select an item and click this button, it'll zoom into that item. And then if you click it again, it'll zoom out. And you can also access that with the E key. Next to that, we have our tools. So command one to access the zoom tool. Command 2 to access the trim tool, Command 3 for the selector tool, Command 4 for the move tool, and then for the multi or smart tool, now if you do Command 7, you can see that all the other buttons are highlighted just like they are in Pro Tools. So that's kind of some extra visual feedback for you. And then finally, Command 5, we have the scrub tool, which lets you scrub. Give me a centipede thing because they give me a centipede thing. Next, we have the eight advanced toolbar options. And I talked about these in a previous video, but the difference here is that these buttons now remember their settings when you quit and restart Reaper. In a previous video, I also said something about having all of these buttons turned on for normal performance, and I've kind of changed my mind about that. So when you update Retooled, it'll give you what I think the best defaults are, and then you can customize it from there. After that, we have auto crossfade, which is the same thing as turning on this button in Reaper's main toolbar. And that makes it so when this button is on, if you drag one item into another item, it'll make an automatic crossfade. After that, we have grid, which turns the grid lines on and off, which is the same as this button in Reaper's main toolbar. Then we have nudge, which opens up the nudge dialog box. And here we can set a nudge value. Right now I have it set for 500 milliseconds. And then I can either nudge an item left or right, or I can use the nudge key commands on my keyboard, which are comma to nudge left and period to nudge right, just like they are in Pro Tools. And then I can make this a smaller nudge amount, let's say 10 milliseconds. And now I'm nudging by 10 milliseconds left or right. Metro turns the metronome on and off, just like this button in Reaper's main toolbar. Then we have our hover edit button, which changes the B key. So B now will make a split wherever you hover your mouse. You don't have to click the mouse to make a split. So I have that turned off by default. Next to that is your color swatch, which opens up this palette here and you can change items to different colors. You can also change tracks to different colors here too. 
Okay, I'm really excited about this next button, which is called Peaks Mode. And as I mentioned earlier, in Reaper, waveforms are called peaks. And this is kind of the default way that we visualize sound in most digital audio workstations where uh, there's a waveform, and if you have a loud sound, the waveform is big, and if you have a quiet sound, the waveform is small. But that's only giving us information about the amplitude or the level or loudness of a sound. But if I click this peaks mode button, it'll switch us into Reaper's spectral peaks view, which colors the waveform based on its spectral content. In other words, if the sound is more bassy or more trebly, it will give different colors. And that can be really interesting. If I click this button again, it will switch us into spectrogram mode where we actually see a map of the sound where the bassy content is here at the bottom and then the trebly content is here at the top. As long as you put a price tag on it, someone's gonna hit buy it now. And this is really helpful because it lets us sort of see inside sound. Like for example, right here, I can tell that there's a breath. As and then if I click this button again, I can see the waveform and the spectrogram simultaneously. And for dialogue editing, this is kind of a game changer. You can really get inside and make edits that were not possible before when you were only looking at the waveform view. And when it comes to tricky edits, this can be kind of an amazing tool. Next, we have our notes panel. So um, you can leave notes on tracks or items. And so if you switch them, you can see these notes will change depending on where my focus is. This next button turns on the master fader, which by default Organism on Earth, except for is configured with a loudness meter on the outside and a peaks meter on the inside. So you can people that really think that we should just go your forward as fast as, as possible and are actually fader. actively engaging in projects like this. It's not illegal. And then I've also configured on this project a bunch of plugins here, uh, a spectrogram and a loudness meter and a Ganyo meter. And um, if you want to set up your master fader with these kind of effects, check out Brendan Baker's radio and podcast template. Next to that, I have this button to render the project. This opens up a dialog box so you can export or bounce. And then finally, at the very end, we have the retooled button, which turns retooled's key commands on and off. So if you don't like the Pro Tools inspired key commands and you want to go back to Reaper's defaults, you can click that and it will go back to the default settings. So those are the big changes to retooled version 2.2, but check out the change log and you can see a detailed list of everything that I've added or modified. Okay, that's it for now. Good luck and happy mixing.